reason I'm here today is because I heard a story a year ago. The story was about a little girl from rural Karnataka who was suffering from this rare blood disease called thalassemia. Picture this. She needs 30 units of blood every month to survive and to lead a normal life like you and me. So we are living in a time where finding a single blood donor is difficult. And you know why? Because most of us think it's not a big issue. Even if it is, one person can all solve it. I knew nothing about thalassemia. As a matter of fact, I heard the word for the first time in my life. But I knew I had to do something about it. I went and uh, researched the current platforms people go to to find blood donors. I spent some time to really understand how effective they are. Well, none of them really you know, surprised me or motivated me to do anything else. I felt they're not fishing where, they're, where they have to fish. Questions started popping in my head. I asked myself, when my social network site can notify me that my friend Raj's birthday is tomorrow, why can't it tell me that Raj was in an accident and needs two units of blood? Or anonymously tell me that somebody in my extended network needs blood. So, I'm a heavy Facebook user. I have like 1,500 friends, out of which I hardly might have met 50. I know many of you can relate to me. So, I went ahead and created eight Facebook groups for eight blood types and uh, linked all of them on a website and called it Social Blood. I went and invited my Facebook friends to join in and soon uh, we saw an increase of people coming and joining groups and not only joining in but they're actually sharing requests, requests for blood. I'd like to share a classic example of a man from uh, Hyderabad who posted about a request to uh, get blood donors for his daughter who was suffering from uh, a heart disease. Within 24 hours, he got 70 calls from perfect strangers. So that's the power of Facebook and human interactions at large. People are not motivated by facts. People are motivated by stories. So after a year of uh, interacting with people and collecting feedback, we realized we are still not doing it right. We missed the most important thing, location. By the end of this month, we are launching a platform which has a chance to really, revel really change the dynamics of blood donation industry and uh, disrupt the whole model. We call it Social Blood Version 2012. I'll take you to the real website. So on the home page, you can actually see the button, what's my blood type. So people with or without knowing the blood type can actually sign up. What we do is we use Facebook as a login and collect their location, their email, their name, their phone number, and then transfer the data to the nearest blood bank in that location so that they can help them check their blood type. In the login page, you can actually see these red dots, blue dots, and green dots. Red dots represent people who are requesting for blood. The blues are people who want to give blood, and the greens are events uh, hosted by blood banks and hospitals. So this is how a request looks like on the map. So if you, if you can observe, there's a timer. The timer denotes the urgency of a request. And on the right side corner, you see a thing called blood relations. So with this, I can actually tell how many of your 500 Facebook friends match your blood type, or how many are O positive, B positive. So if you're sitting in Delhi and uh, want to help someone who is sitting in Noida, you can actually recommend a friend who is in Noida with the same blood type. This is how the blood request form looks like. It's a simple form which will connect you to people in that particular location who has the same blood type. You can see who responded to your request. You can respond back and follow up with them. Uh, this is a uh, portal for uh, hospitals and blood banks. They can actually uh, maintain their current databases. They can recruit new blood donors and manage the ones uh, pretty well. They also can set blood stock levels which will actually notify when it's below 20%. It will notify the people in that particular location with the same blood type that they have to go donate. Organizations will have an ability to create events and invite people. Social Blood was fundamentally started to change the world. We are not, uh, we are not created this organization to make money, but a movement. 
a movement where we plan to unite a billion people to help solve the world's blood crisis. So six months ago, I decided I must not and, uh, <coughs> confine my compassion towards my own people, but I should also spread the idea to other parts of the globe. So we launched Social Blood in 20 countries across the world. We also signed up uh, a partnership with a Brazilian uh, National Blood Bank. So the idea is not to you know, solve every problem. We cannot solve every problem. We can't solve uh, climate crisis or population or anything else, but we can solve the blood crisis sitting right here, right now. If you observe the whole website, you actually see less of red and more of blue. So my answer to it is we think the users in social blood are blue-blooded and donating blood is a noble act. Thank you.